Good morning. It's finally become time again to go down to Antarctica and join my vessel Viking Polaris. Come along on this trip. Jag fick en gammal uppdatering nu. Ja, jag pingar upp. Eh, se om den kopplar upp sig. För den måste ha... Jag ser inte den just nu så det betyder att eh, det kanske inte kom... Eh, gick inte att eh, pinga AirTagget. Ja, eh, det sitter lite lappar, eh, lite spårlappar. Det står mitt samman också på tidigare fyr. Så här spårningsspår där. Det är på laget. Ja, ah, toppen. Fy fan vad skönt. Ja, tack så jättemycket för hjälpen. Snyggt jobbat. Du, vet du vad? Då har han hittat väska. Äh, då då det fan. Och han hade en massa andra stundbord på sig. Jag ser. Vad är på i Amsterdam? Fort Big Blue. Båsar. First stop on the flight to down to Ushuaia. Don't have any luggage. Since it was stolen on the train. I mean, quite amazing actually. Um, I sat down when we were supposed to leave the train when we came to the airport. I went looking for the bag. Didn't find it, thought, okay, yeah, I'd probably put it on the other side of the carriage. And nope, didn't find any luggage, uh, so then I was like, did I forget it on the last train? Went in uh, on Find My uh, app on the iPhone, and uh, to my surprise realized that my luggage was all of a sudden in another town in Sweden. I went from Kalmar to Copenhagen to Malmö. And suddenly the bag was in Lund and it was moving. Someone stole the bag with my air tag in it. This is so amazing. This is why I have air tags in all my bags, including this one. And it works so great. So I called the police. The police immediately responded and was really helpful. And they sent a police patrol to the end station for the train the bag was on. And uh, when the train arrived, they sealed off the train. They checked every person that got off and found a man with the bag. And they arrested this guy and found even more stolen things on him. So, but unfortunately, I had to leave. Like, they arrested this guy one and a half hour before our flight left. So, currently... My office is checking for the options of uh, buying some clothes. But anyway, now I'm heading to the main terminal. Maybe go shopping. And then try to find the plane. So I'm flying from Amsterdam to Buenos Aires tonight. 13 and a half hours. And then from Buenos Aires down to Ushuaia and joining the ship. It's Today it's Saturday. So I'm joining the ship on Monday. Or arriving in Ushuaia. Tomorrow evening, and we'll stay at the hotel, and then go on board Viking Polaris again. So I managed to find my colleague Philip. He's uh, almost ready for the trip. Did I say good?
after more than 30 hours, I finally arrived in Ushuaia, the pretty much end of the world. And it looks nice, uh, an amazing place. The mountains rises straight up in the air. It's uh, summertime, so it's almost like in Sweden where the sun basically never really sets. And it's uh, right now almost nine o'clock in the evening. Some traffic. I can see the Beagle channel straight ahead, which is where we are sailing out tomorrow. Viking Polaris is currently docked in the harbor and uh, my pickup arrives at 5.30 in the morning and uh, then I'm going on board the ship, relieving my colleague that is going home and I'm starting my 10 week contract on Viking Polaris. So we're gonna do two more cruises down to Antarctica. Good morning. It's currently 5.20 a.m. in the morning in Ushaya. I'm just going down to the lobby now and we're gonna be picked up and transferred uh, transfer to the ship. Such a nice morning. Wow, incredible morning. Here's our pickup. Let's go to the ship. things to catch up with, saying bye to the colleagues I'm relieving and yeah, welcome to my cabin nice cozy big bed and I just picked up a new uniform since my luggage is gone I was unsure and did a lot of shopping also just so I can survive this contract so quick shower and jump into the uniform and head out to the bridge Good morning, our sea passage is almost over and we are slowly entering into Antarctica now. I can see some growlers and uh, burger beats passing by the uh, porthole. So I thought I would head up uh, to the bridge now. It's uh, 11, uh, quarter past 11 and I'm soon going to have uh, some lunch before me and Vidar is uh, the one doing the approach for today's location, which is uh, Fournier Bay. Once uh, we park the ship, we will... Uh, Throw out all the toys, the submarines, the special operations boat, and all the zodiacs. So we'll see what uh, I will be doing once we are in Fournier Bay. So yeah, let's head up to the bridge now. We just arrived in Fournier Bay, now it's time to quickly get changed into my gear and then head uh, into the hangar and get the SOB ready for some sightseeing with the guests. So let's get changed. There we go, so let's head out to the hangar. Uh, welcome to the hangar. So this will be, that one will be my boat for today. CF3, it looks like. Gonna prep it and then take it out and then we're gonna board the guests. This is an amazing crop. It's a, such a fun toy. <laughs> so I'll place the boat alongside now. Well, it's heaving the boat a bit. Also, more power when the guest arrives. Oh, they should be able to board safely. Cool. It's not the ice. And I'm in the wrong jackets. I'm in the yellow one instead of our red ones for the deck crew. This is the expedition jacket. Well, it's gonna be a nice trip. 
whilst they are on work. to Wordy Hut and I'm gonna head up uh, to the bridge now and do the watch at uh, midnight to 4 a.m. Yes, I'll sleep and then tomorrow we, me and my colleague Vidar is going ashore to Wordy Hut. As you saw in the intro, we've already been in Fornio Bay and today we were in Damoy. So this was a quite nice and calm watch. We just went through the French passage, put the ship on drifting, on the living mode. So we didn't use the dynamic positioning tonight, just to avoid thruster, so everyone on board can sleep instead of uh, having the thrusters going off every now and then to keep the ship in position. So now, crash landing in the bed. Talk to you later. So let's try and see if we can get on the zodiac and go ashore in the worthy house. It was built in 1935 when it was a, an Australian called John Rymill and he led the British Graham Land Expedition and they mapped 10,000 miles worth of uh, coastline and then here all the way down to King George Ice Shelf from here. Huge what they did. And they proved, so it shows how recent it was 1935, they proved that the peninsula is part of the continent because one time they thought it was maybe an island. And then they built this in 1947, and the five men wintering doing meteorology. And then in 1954, they moved through to Faraday, and now it's Manovsky. Manovsky, I don't know if it's In 1996, we gave it to the Ukrainians. 